Please join me in our prayer of confession. Lord God, it is so easy for us to make mistakes in our daily life. We focus on the wrong priorities and become distracted from the truth. We become insensitive to others, indifferent to our ethics, and lukewarm in our devotion towards you. Forgive us, Lord, and clear our minds of confusion, and help us to focus on that which is important to you and to our fellow human beings. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
for good news. Let the heavenly food of Scripture nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord of heaven. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind flies away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is the word of the Lord. The sermon text today is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testify of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. This is the word of the Lord.
Gracious God, you give and give to us so that we can give in return. Help us to give with our hearts, with our treasury, and with our talents so that we can make your world a better place. In your name we pray. saving one's life by losing one's life. 
Only in the light of the resurrection can the followers of Jesus stand with the poor and the outcasts and the oppressed. Only in the doctrine of the resurrection can the followers of Jesus stand and join Christ in providing care and seeking justice for the most vulnerable people in our society and trusting that God will bless these efforts even if we never see the results. The resurrection gives the faithful the freedom to live their lives in the shadow of the cross as Jesus did. And William Barclay says that the resurrection is crucial to our faith because it relates truth, goodness, love, and life. So here's what we believe the resurrection is necessary. Our faith would be very different if that event never took place. If Jesus did not rise, we would not rise to eternal life. So the resurrection does and gives us many things. First, it proves that truth is stronger than false. Jesus came to bestow upon us the truth. He challenged the way people treated God. He dispelled the teachings of the religious experts and demonstrated who God was and what God was all about. God was about love, not law. About forgiveness, not punishment. Goodness, not retribution. Serving, not being served. Humility, not arrogance, giving God glory and not using religion for personal gain. Jesus did that by living a normal Jewish life. He obeyed the rituals. He was the firstborn child to his parents. He worked in a trade. He embraced life. And when the time was right, he began his ministry. As Jesus the man and as Jesus the son of God, he lived by God's truth. He obeyed it, he trusted it, he shared it, was guided by it, and taught others what it meant and how to live with it. His enemies didn't care about the truth. For them, it was too important for their own falsehood to be made intact. Their only option was to discredit Jesus, to tell lies about him, to create shame and humiliation regarding him, and ultimately to put him Dead. Now, had the story of Jesus ended with his death, had the resurrection not occurred, then deceits and lies would be stronger than the truth. But because Jesus rose again, it shows that God's truth is indestructible. So if we live by God's truth, we are indestructible. We will be with God for all of eternity. Second, the resurrection proves that good is stronger than evil. Now, I, I know that it doesn't seem like it, based on how we live and what the world is like. But we do live in a place, and we are a people, that deal with or are looking for goodness. We want good things in life, so much so the word good is woven into the fabric of our society. It's in our language, it's in our belief system. We use the word good in so many ways. We can be good as gold. We can do someone a good turn. Things can happen all in good time. We can do things for good reason or in good conscience. Sometimes we do things that are not welcome, but we say it's for a person's own good. And they are done for good measure. So whether you look good on paper or you are up to no good, we learn to take the good with the bad. I know that someone right now is thinking, I hope he is done, for all good things must come. <laughs> for the most part, babies are born craving, giving, and receiving love. Which means concepts such as pride and jealousy and hatred and anger, these are things we learn from others. Most live by the adage that we reap what we sow. So if we sow seeds of goodness, goodness comes to us. And if we are sowing seeds of evil, then evil will come into our lives. We live in this world and we are good citizens because we follow a code of ethic. We develop morals. We observe the laws of society. We obey the foundations and the principles that, that are set before us by those who came before us. And all of these are attributes of being good, decent people. 
As Christians, goodness is inextricably linked to God. We are taught to love one another, to love our neighbors, to help each other in need, to forgive 70 times 7, to turn the other cheek, to follow the golden rule. It is ingrained in us from our early days that good conquers evil. But without the resurrection, evil would have won. Good would have been defeated, and all good things would take on an entirely different meaning. In short, with no resurrection, we could never again be certain that good is stronger than evil. Third, the resurrection proves that love is stronger than hate. And now, of the two emotions, I think it's harder to do what is right out of love than it is to show hate. That's the easy part. How easy and justified would Jesus have been if he let his anger get the better of him? He could have summoned the legion of angels to come to his side. He had the power to stop the crucifixion at any time. He could have refused to even go through with it in the first place. But instead, he took the right path, the harder path, the forgiving path, the merciful path, the loving path. There is a poem by Theodosia Pickering Garrison called A Ballad of Easter, and it talks about God's love. I heard two soldiers talking as they came down the hill, the somber hill of Calvary, bleak and black and still. And one said, the night is late, these thieves take long to die. And one said, I am sore afraid, and yet I know not why. I heard two women weeping as down the hill they came. One was like a broken rose, and one was like a flame. And one said, Now people shall rue this deed their hands have done. And one said only through her tears, My son, my son, my son. I heard two angels singing, ere yet the dawn was bright, and they were clad in shining robes, robes and crowns of light. And one sang death is vanquished, and one in golden voice sang love hath conquered, conquered all, O heaven and earth, rejoice. The resurrection proves that love's God will conquer all. Finally, the resurrection proves that life is stronger than death. Had Jesus not risen, then the falsehood and the evil and the hatred of death would have conquered and would have taken away the loveliest, purest, and best life that ever lived. But because life was stronger than death, Jesus did rise. And the resurrection not only gives us truth and goodness and love and life, it is the bedrock of our faith. Because he rose, Jesus kept his promise. Because he rose, we have God's grace given in Christ. Because he rose, we have the certainty that our sins are forgiven. Because he rose, we have with us the living presence of Jesus. Because he rose, dead was defeated. Because he rose and sits with God in heaven, we too will rise and be with God forever. There was once two men who were out in a they were in a new place. Somewhere they'd never been before, they were out for a while and they were walking towards a village. And they were kind of in the countryside, and they were out in the clearing, and they saw that where they were, there was a river nearby, and they walked towards the river. And sitting on the river bank was a woman who was sitting there just crying her eyes out. So the two men came up to her, and the first man said, you look so sad. Is there anything we can do to help? And she said, well, the bridge is washed out. I live on the other side of the river, and there's no way for me to get home. And the first man said, well, how about if, what about if me and my friend here, what if we try to build you a bridge? And she said, well, that's very sweet, but that's a whole lot of work, and I wouldn't want you to do that, so no. Well, said the man, how about if we build you a raft, and you can go across the river? And she said, well, that sounds really scary, I'm not really good with Okay, well, how about if me and my friend uh, pick you up and carry you across the river? And she said, okay, let's give that a try. 
So they go on either side of her, and they link their arms, and they scoop her right up above the water, and they carry her across the river. And they gently put her on dry land. And she was very grateful, and very kind, and very thankful, and sang their praises, and she went on her way. The men decided now that they were on that side of the river, they would keep walking and see what they came upon. So they walked about a mile, and the second man spoke, and he said, I am now filthy. My clothes are soaked through. I am soaked to the skin, all because we had to take that woman across the river. And the first man just kind of smiled, and they continued on their way, and they went two more miles. And the second man said, And not only am I wet and dirty, my back is killing me. That woman was heavier than she wrote. And all this because we had to stop and help her. And I'm now in a lot of pain. And the first man gave that awkward nod and that tension filled air, and they kept going, and they went two more miles. And the second man said, I'm not kidding, my back really hurts. I don't think I can go another step. I'm going to have to go see the doctor. I, I, can't, I can't do this, and I don't know how I'm going to get home because my back is just killing me. And I don't know why it's not hurting you. You can't tell me that wasn't a strain on your back. All we did to get that woman across the river. And the first man looked at his friend and he said, My back doesn't hurt at all. And I'll tell you why your back is sore. I'll tell you why you're complaining. He said, because in your mind, you're still carrying the woman. I set her down five miles ago. Don't we do that? Don't we hold on and carry the past and the mistakes and the burdens and the sins? And all we have to do is put them down and let them go. That's what the resurrection is all about. That gift in Christ, that grace of Christ shown to us, that act that we are now one with God, and sinful or not, we can put everything down and we can let it go. And let's ask God to help us do just that. Let us pray. Gracious God be with us. Help us to remember that we not only can let go, you also give us everything we need so that we can go move forward and serve in your name now and always. Amen. As we move into our time of the Lord's Supper, we have to participate together in the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In the Lord's Supper, Christ is present by the power of the Holy Spirit and offers us his body broken for our sake and his blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. This invitation is open to all who trust in the Lord. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, God's people said, Lord, have mercy. For leaders of the church, for our ministers and all ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for those who do not yet believe and those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who live and work in the community of the Mahoning Valley, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present, and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For Lucy, Brandon, Phyllis, Cloy, Lee, Jeanette, Sandy, Mike, and Lorraine. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, that strengthened by their witness, we may be grateful for their example, living in justice and love until we join them in life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us entrust ourselves and one another and all of life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts,
God of Christ shed for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you. 